Hey everybody, uh, so we're going to jump into 10.2 now and uh, just wanted to um, go through this first question. There's only four problems here, so um, they're all basically the same. So we'll just go through the first one there and uh, we'll kind of walk through it. Okay, so this is a hypothesis test for independence. It uses the same um, chi-square statistic as you used in 10.1, but the expected frequencies are just a little more complicated, which you probably saw. Okay, so we'll go ahead and jump in. There's a lot of data here on this problem. It says researchers surveyed 311 children in the first, second, and third grades. They're all summarized in this table. Asking what was their highest priority in school, good grades, popularity, or sports ability. The result, results are tabulated down here below. I, I'd like to see this broken down by gender too, but that, they didn't give us that. Just by grade level, so it's kind of interesting to see how kids change as they grow. Um, but here we go, we're going to test the claim that highest priority, that is these, con these uh, topics here, the grades and the popularity in sports, highest priority is dependent on grade level at 1% significance. Okay, so for the test for independence, um, we first need to enter all of our expected frequencies. So the expected frequencies um, have to be put in this table um, with three rows and three columns. And so the expected frequencies are always row total times column total over grand total. So for the first graders that prioritize grades, the row total you get up here. So the first grader, uh, the graders that prioritize grades, there were 44 of them, but what we expected were row total, which is 118. Okay, times the column total for this group, which is 111. Okay, and then divided by the grand total, which is this number down here, 311. Just like that. Okay, so that should have been 42.1-ish. What we saw were 44, that's really close. Um, and uh, let me just double check here. I'm trying to see how it says three places, there we go. So it's gonna be 42.116, like that. Okay, now we're doing the second graders. Okay, so the second graders that prioritize grades, the row total is 118. Let me just go and clear this. 118 times the column total for the second graders, it was 112, very similar number. Okay, and then divided by the grand total for um, all, everybody is 311. So this is gonna be a really similar answer this time, but. 42.495, I guess, will work. Oh. And uh, now for the third graders who prioritize grades, the row total was 118. Oops. So 118 times the column total uh, for the third graders is 88 and then divide by the grand total, which again is 311. Okay, and so we get 33.389. Okay, and um, that's one row. <laughs> and of course you can check these anytime you want. I'll just go ahead and check them now. And those are all good. Okay, now we're gonna go to the second row. For um, the first graders, uh, the second row is popularity. So for the first graders um, that value prop popularity, the row total is 99 times the column total for the first graders, 111, and divided by the grand total, which will always be 311. Okay, and it says 35.334. And now to the second graders, the row total there for the second graders that value property is still 99. 
times um, the column total of the second graders, which is 112. Again, a real similar value to the first graders. And then divide by that 311 grand total. Okay, so here we get 36.652. Okay. Now to the third graders, um, still in the popularity category, there were 99 as the row total times the column total for the third graders, which was 88. And then dividing by the grand total, which is 311. Okay, and so that's 28.013, I guess is what we'll write. check that. Uh oh, I got a mistake. So this 36.652 should have been 35.652. We'll just fix that. Okay, so that's good. And then now down to the sports. Um, okay, for the first graders, um, we're in uh, the sports row, so the row total is 94. I'll clear this. So 94 times the column total for the first graders was 111. Divide by the grand total, which should have been 311. Okay, and so 33.550 is how I'm going to have to round that. Okay, so 33.550, okay, and then for the second graders, the row total um, in sports is 94 um, times the column total. We're doing second graders, so that would be 112 of them. Divided by the grand total, which of course is 311 uh, again. So 33.852, okay, and then um, um, the uh, last group, third graders that like sports, so the row total was 94 times the column total for the third graders was 88 over the grand total of 311. Okay, so 26.598 looks about right. Eight like that. Oops, I lost my point. Okay, so um, again, fingers crossed, it's perfect. Okay, so next, and of course, and if you make a mistake here, then make sure you use the correct values, which I'm giving after you've already submitted that. Okay, and then um, the criteria for the test is that at each expected frequency should be at least five. Yeah, obviously all these are bigger than five, so we can see, yeah, the criteria are met here. And then the null hypothesis is always one of independence. So here we're saying that the student's highest priority is independent of grade level. That'll always be the null hypothesis. Okay, and the alternative hypothesis is always that they are dependent. Okay, so those are your hypotheses. Should be okay on all of that. What's it doing? One more time, there we go. Okay, so that's all good. Now we all have all our observed fre frequencies and the expected frequencies here. So the thing that's left is to do the test statistic, which always has you do the sum of the O minus E squared over E um, numbers. So we're going to start with the first uh, grader who, graders who value grades most. So coming up above, so again, it's O minus E squared over E. So we're going to have to go back up so we can see both of those. So for the first graders, the O is 44. Um, minus the E, we're over here, 42.116. OK. 
Okay, and then that gets squared. And then down below with the 42.116. Like that. And then we'll see how much they want us to round that. Um, three places, so we're going to go 0 0.084. And, you know, we can check this at every step, so that one's good. Okay, so that was for those first graders in the top row. Now we're going to go to the second graders in the top row. So um, the O was 53. And let's get this going. 53. The expected value was 42.495. Okay, and then close parentheses, square, and then divided by E, which is again 42.495. Double checking the numbers here, all looks good. All right, so again, three places, so 2.597, I guess we'll go. Okay, I'll check that. That's good. All right, back. <laughs> Next one. Um, we're still working with grades, but we're going to now do the third graders. So the O, observed frequency for third graders, was um, 21. Minus the expected frequency for the third graders, 33.8. Sorry, 33.389, which is really different makes me wonder if I made a mistake. So we observed 21, we expected 33.389, looks good. Square it, and then again, 33.389. Okay, so and again, three places, five, sorry, 4.597, we'll say. Checking my answer. Looks great. Thank goodness. Okay, now down to the popularity row. We'll start with the first graders. Okay, so um, for the first graders, um, 44, uh, we're on popularity. So 37 observed. Minus expected um, popularity for the first graders, 35.334. Close parentheses, square over, same, 35.334. Enter, okay, so point oh seven. Nine, I guess, with the three places. So really small. Check it. Looks great. Now we're in the second grade with popularity. So up here, doing O minus E. So the observed frequency here in the middle of the second graders who liked the popularity was 32. Um, observed what was expected was 35.652 okay and close parentheses square and divide by the expected frequency 35.652 okay and pretty small 0.3740 Four one, I should say. There's a nine after, so three seven four one should be good. All right, now we're going third grade, third graders who value pro, uh, popularity. Okay, so um, in the third grade, the popularity ones were thirty observed. 
minus um, 28.013 expected, pretty close. And we square it and divide by the expected frequency 28.013. It should be pretty small. Looks good. Three digits, 0 0.141 is what I'll put in. And in every case here, I'm just doing the observed frequency minus the expected frequency squared and then dividing by the expected frequency. One more row, we're doing this, this, the sports lovers in first grade. So up here, yeah. Okay, so um, sports lover in first grade, we observed 30. minus what we expected, 33.550, that's really close. Okay, and then square, and then divide by. Okay, same number, 33.550. That, that's O minus E squared over E. Enter, so 0.376 I guess we'll go with. Okay, and now we're doing the sports lovers in second grade. So up here. Okay, so sports lovers in second grade observed were 27 minus um, expected 33.852. Okay, close the parentheses, square it over 33.852. Looks great. So 1.387, I think we better do. Wherever it goes, here we go. 1.387. Okay, one more. So we're doing the third graders who love sports. So let's clear that. Okay, so O observed third graders in love sports were 37 of them minus what was expected, which was 26.598. Close parens and square. And divide by the expected frequency 26.598. Yeah. Okay, so that's a point, sorry, 4.068, I guess. 4.068, that's pretty big. Big numbers like that will trip the test to a, a rejection on the null hypothesis. 4.068, did I get it? Let's check it. It must have been right. There we go. All right, now the chi-square statistic is the sum of O minus E squared over E. So that's all of these numbers here. I have to add these all up. So here we go. Um, first one's 0 0.084 plus um, next one 2.597. Plus next one 4.597. Plus next row point oh seven nine. Okay, plus point three seven four one. I have too many digits there. 
should have been 0.374. It did not trigger an error, but I'm going to go with the 0.374 uh, so that I don't get snagged on that. Plus 0.141. Plus, third row, 0.376, plus 1.387, this is tedious, can't believe I've been teaching this for so long, this is a pain in the butt, okay, 4.068, okay, that's it, I hope I did them all. Okay, 13.703, it seems like a pretty big test statistic here. 13.703, all right, close your eyes, cross your fingers. It wants three places, that looks good. We'll just check it. Oh, good, it's right. Okay, so that's our test statistic. We need a critical value on this one. So just as a reminder, the degrees of freedom is rows minus one times columns minus one. Um, so uh, the rows, you don't count the total row or the total column here, so be real careful with that. Um, if you look right here, there are three rows and three columns, um, that, and that doesn't include total rows or total columns. So it's three and three. So over here on my pad, there were three rows minus one and three columns minus one. That's just two times two, which is four. Okay, so we're going to do four degrees of freedom. Okay, um, I do not remember what the alpha is, so let's find that. Uh, down here, 1%, so we'll put that in here, 0.01, and it's going to ask us for that critical value. So um, we're going to have to look that up on the table. So four degrees of freedom, 0.01 alpha, let's just slide up here real quick okay so four degrees of freedom 0.01 alpha and so that's the critical value 13.2767 this is really close 13.2767 I'm going to erase that real quick and Come back down here, 13.2767. Okay, we'll put that in. Yeah. Should be right. Must be, yeah, that's good. Now, if you, if you know, we have a test statistic of 13.703. It's really close. So um, let me move things out a little bit out of the way so I can squeeze all this in. Okay, so my test statistic is just barely to the right here. So I'll do it in blue, a little dot there. That's my chi-square test statistic. And that was significant because it's in this tail. Okay, which means we're going to be able to support. Um, hang on. A little trouble. Hang on, hang on. Okay, so we will be able to support our alternative hypothesis on this one. Okay, so let's see what we've got here. Oh, yeah. Everything's good. 13.703 is what we got, right? 2761 looks perfect. Okay, so now we need to figure out our p-value. So um, with, the, with the test statistic here, we're just going to have to dial up 13.7. So right about, and you can see how it just barely goes into that tail. A little problem with my graphic here. I don't know if I have a chance to figure that out later, but there it is. Okay, and the p-value is 0.008. Okay, and we'll check that real quick. Not done, I know, I know. 0.008 is the correct p-value. Okay, so make a note over here. 
Um, so the p-val is 0.00. I'll kind of do what I always do and obscure the third digit. 0.00 is less than 0.01, which is our alpha. Less means that we reject the null hypothesis. And we will support H1, which just says that the variables are dependent here. So um, we'll just we'll look for a conclusion that states that the two events are the two variables are dependent on each other. Okay, so um, we are rejecting the null hypothesis and supporting the alternative. The alternative hypothesis said that the variables are dependent. So when we look at these choices, the data support the claim that highest priority and grade level are dependent, not. Um, yeah, that, that they are dependent, we can go with that. This one says they don't support the claim that they're dependent. We're, we're saying they're dependent. So we'll check the answer, should be okay. We got 10 out of 10 here. And that covers it for chapter 10. We'll see you guys soon.